And I thought, hey, what if I have fans? And I didn't. But, you know, what yeah. if I did? Um, <laughs> but how would they know that I'm in this band? Um, but <laughs> that's, such, that's the worst reason. <laughs> nice. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I am very happy to welcome recent transplants from Alaska, Adam Patterson and the Heavy Hearts. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Hi. Sharon. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, I'm Carly. I play mandolin. Woot. And sing. I'm Adam. I play acoustic guitar and sing. I'm Dylan. I play guitar and stuff. In shop. <laughs> In shop. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, gonna be like that. Cool. Um, well, welcome and welcome to Nevada officially. Thank um, you. Welcome to my home. Thank you. Thank you. Chink. Chink. Oh. I forgot to tap. You guys did the table thing. Scotch, scotch. Yes. So, I saw these lovely folks at. Headlining, no, I'm sorry, opening at uh, Joey Hines' uh, latest show. Of course, you know, Joey Hines is my only two time guest so far. Link here. And over at Hardway 8, they uh, did an awesome job opening up, and I was amazed at the amount, the, the, the fullness of sound you got out of the, the basically the, the lack of major equipment. You know? You, you didn't have a huge stack of amps or anything like that. So we'll get into that in gear later on. But um, I said I have to talk to them and see if I can get them on the show. So here we go. I'm not going to ask my usual question of how long you've been in Vegas. So <laughs> have any of you been to Vegas or Nevada before? I've been no. to Reno before um, a couple of times. Cool. Yeah, me. Right on. And so you, this was a total just... We're moving to Vegas. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, he got never, a job here. We followed him. Never been here before. Nice. What is, if you don't mind me asking, what is the like history of the relationship between the three of you? I guess I've known Carly the we went, longest. We went to high school. We went to high school together. together. Okay. But I can't say we stayed in touch that whole time. We didn't really know each other that well. We were yeah. like knew of each other. Um, and I had moved back to Alaska and she was running an open mic and that's how we kind of met and... I met Dylan uh, also through the open mic, right? Uh, well, our former bass player and drummer mm -hmm. recruited him at uh, like a blues jam. Oh yeah, because yeah. I met him at Schwanhof too. Right. Open mics are a great uh, hunting run. Indeed, yeah. I found uh, members there. Um, how long have you been Adam Patterson and the Heavy Hearts? No, that's two years. Close to two years, if not over yeah. two years. Over, Over two years. years. Mm -hmm. I've been in the band close to two years. I, I'm the late addition. Was there any name before that? No. No, there wasn't. It's always been Adam Patterson and Heavy Hearts. We tried changing it, but he wouldn't let us. Nice. <laughs> yeah. that guy. No, I, I had the Joshua Courtright band for a while because we were playing literally my CD, my stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. And I said, here, here's what it is. Figure out your parts. And as soon as we started writing original music together... And it was totally different. I was like, okay, I think we need a, a name change because also I just felt, I felt weird personally, but it's because it wasn't Joshua Corright and something. Right. Just the Joshua Corright band. Uh, that makes you interchangeable. <laughs> Hired guns. I, um, despite the name, we are definitely a band and it yeah. is a collective effort. And um, I definitely got that just from the way that you write the songs. I could tell this isn't the Adam Patterson band. Right. And the, my reasoning, or our reasoning, in the beginning was because these were songs I was playing by myself initially. And I thought, hey, what if I have fans? And I didn't. But, you know, what yeah. if I did? Um, <laughs> but how would they know that I'm in this band? Um, but <laughs> that's, such, that's the worst reason. <laughs> nice. Um, Maybe that's an excuse for being a narcissist. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah, I know it's early, but we're going to take a jump cut already because that camera's crooked and the dog wants out. Okay. <laughs> We're back. So quick question. How long have you each been doing music? 
Uh, I have been playing guitar and piano since I was about eight, and I played bass, and I've only been playing mandolin in this band for about two years, because there was already a guitarist and a bass player. And, yeah. I've been playing, it'll be ten years in about a month. Uh, just basically some friends of mine from middle school, they saw they had guitars on their wall, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> and they started teaching me a couple chords, and kind of... Here I am. Nice. I, I wasn't ignoring you, by the way. I was trying to glare him down because he was the guitar player. You couldn't... Oh, I know. Yeah. No, I was glaring at him the whole time. Didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about you, Mr. Patterson? I started... My mom was a music teacher and like I took piano lessons, but I didn't really like it. And then taught myself how to play guitar in the eighth grade. And I think started writing music in high school and playing in a band and stuff like that. Right on. Uh, like you, you were doing piano at six, you said, mm -hmm. and I did it at seven, and I wish I'd stuck with it, but guitar came along, so there you go. If you don't practice, you don't remember stuff. Use it or lose it. Uh, let's talk early musical influences, anybody. Uh, what first got you like, hey, I, I want to do that, or I want to learn that song, or that genre of music, or whatever? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, your mom's a music teacher, so you probably heard all sorts of classical stuff. Yeah, not not an early influence, though. I think. Um, oh, I think it got in there. <laughs> what um, what made me want to start learning guitar and stuff was when I was first introduced to punk rock because uh, yeah, it was easy to play, it was energetic, good three chords. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes more. I don't know. Do you remember like specifically a band or a song? Um, probably biggest bands would have been Face to Face and Rancid. I would say, yeah. Nice. Bit of a bit of a leap from where you are now. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we're still three chords. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's just slower punk. <laughs> Abel's? Um, mine was probably actually ACDC. Seeing, because like, I've seen people play guitar and I didn't really have any sort of music I like latched on to until right. I was in like eighth grade. And uh, when I went to my friend's houses, the one that had the, the guitars on the wall, um, they showed me ACDC for the first time, and I saw it's this little tiny dude running across the stage yeah. like a like a. Let me guess, Back in Black for a song. I think so. Yeah, that was actually the first song I learned too. You know how to write some catchy ass rips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nobody starts with uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, I think that was like the third or fourth one. Yeah, that's uh, when you feel like. I can do that the whole song. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it gets old real quick. Um, you? Um, I was a lot like Adam. I started out listening to, well, I grew up on like classic rock and seventies rock and stuff like that with my parents and I liked it, but I really got into playing when I was listening to punk, like Goldfinger and No Effects and Strung Out and stuff like that. Rancid 2, that's what got me playing bass in the beginning. Right. Oh my god, they do like their bass lines. Mm -hmm. um, moving from early musical influences to current influences, what are you listening to now that kind of gets you jazzed? I've been listening, like this week I discovered a band called Goodbye June, mm -hmm. and they're they're kind of have like a, like one of the guys is the same exact guitar I use, super fat guitars. Um, when you say fat guitars, you mean tone? Yeah, tone. Okay. Like, or like a Gretsch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Um, like one of them's playing ES335, the other one's playing a thin line telly. But they kind of, every, every single instrument has a purpose and, and super present. Um, so I've been listening to them a lot lately. Greta Van Fleet, uh, right? Greta Van Fleet, it, the first time I heard them on the radio, I was like, oh, well, they're just ripping off Zeppelin. But no, there's more there. There's more there. I saw them like a week after I moved here because they had a show. Right. And they, they killed it. it was better than on the albums. I just know there was a, con there was a, probably an argument or a conversation about which song we put out first. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's going to make us sound like Zeppelin. Or, or I just, I have this feeling like that's not all they are. Yeah, no, they they impressed me. Like, I heard that first song and I thought it was Zeppelin and for like a month. Yeah, I couldn't, Ditto. I couldn't find, like, because it was on the, I usually don't listen to the radio, but I was camping, so I was going to get firewood and the radio just happened to be on and that song came on and the DJ didn't announce what the song was, so for a month I was like, I have no idea what that song was. I thought that was Zeppelin. I thought I knew all the Zeppelin. Yeah, I thought I knew all the Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Current musical influences? Uh, I 
<laughs> I listen to like sad folk music or yeah. Uh, John, you don't say. <laughs> John Moreland's a favorite. I was listening to Langhorn Slim on the way over. Um, there's a guy called Jeffrey Martin that I think writes the saddest songs I ever heard. And you know, nice. Yeah, you know, I like those. That's what I love about doing the show, and I've said it before, faithful viewers. I hear all these names I've never heard of. Mm -hmm. And so it gives me, especially when I'm editing and I'm listening to you say that about five different times, <laughs> I'm always like, okay, make a note, you know, someone else. And sometimes it's gold for me. And sometimes I'm like, eh, not my cup of tea, but I get exposed to it. It, this is my deep, this is my, uh, my, uh, uh box, my bin diving in the record store, mm -hmm. you know, just like, oh, that looks cool. So how about you? We all have very different tastes in music. I listen to a lot of stuff. I like like technical death metal a lot. It's my jam lately, like Arch Spire. Right on. Rings of Saturn and Black Dahlia Murder and things like that. Black Dahlia like Murder just did a show here with my last guest. Uh, sorry, two guests ago. Mm -hmm. um, what band? You, I know. It's immediately gone. I'm so sorry, guys. My roommate's band played with them, too, so now I'm curious. What's that band? Gods of Hate. No, not Gods of Hate. Um, damn it. Pariah was one. They were there too. Sorry, I've been I've been editing a lot lately. So. The Vatican Falling was the other band. They were really nice, but yeah, I heard that show went off. Like they had to uh, Triple B had a uh, backstage bar in billiards for the those things that don't know. Triple B had to open up their big room. The country club, free my country club. Yeah, because yeah. I had no idea that was separate. I thought it was a separate thing, but it turns out that's just. Oh, we're getting too big here. Too, the crowd's getting too big. Let's it was open packed up the in the big room, too. It was crazy. Yeah. I was like, that's the kind of gig you dream about as a rock star. You're like, or yeah, as a, a rock musician, and you're just like, I want that. I never yeah. thought it. Um, now for the most hated questions for interviews. How do you define your musical style? <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't think it's sad. It's Americana sad core. If you listen to the lyrics, <laughs> it's sad, but... It's, it's a lot of it's pretty, pretty happy a, a beat, yeah. yeah. Um, I love I love that where you you're like and then you listen you listen or you learn the lyrics you're like oh <laughs> I don't know, I it's not so happy alternative folk Americana pop rock <laughs> I don't know I'd go that far you weren't pulling <laughs> out Britney Spears or something well that's why I had the rock there's right. pop rock in there too there you go I, I don't know it's tough I kind of like uh, alternative country I think you know that doesn't <laughs> sound um, but I, it's probably just Americana. I'm trying to. Yeah. yeah. I think you told me at, at Joey's gig, uh, yeah. uh, or the gig you did with Joey, uh, Americana folk, mm. which was a generic term. Oh, no, no, that's what I saw online. For, okay. I think that's what I saw online. Yeah, we've been labeled as a lot of things, and they're all different. Right. I, when you throw a mandolin in there, yeah. there's only so many genres that it's going <laughs> to be. True. You're not gypsy music. <laughs> well, like Carly was saying earlier, we all come from very different backgrounds. Right. And all of that, like, that's why it's difficult for us to define what our sound really right. is. Cause like I come from a very classic rock background and I like big fat guitar tone and yep. very ener being very right. energetic and moving around and stuff. And we also have a cohesive sound together somehow. Yeah. You, you do. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense. You have that. What I thought was really nice about your music is just when it's getting a little, little far down that Americana folk trail, mm -hmm. here he comes with a guitar solo. <laughs> and, and it's a it, good crunchy guitar solo too. Mm -hmm. Like really, really good. And then the mandolin comes in. And it's you, you. The songwriting definitely is is. It's not formulaic, but at the same time, you're not going esoteric. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going really weird with stuff. But it seems like everybody's getting their their dues. Um, you definitely should check them out. If nothing else, for the suitcase drum. <laughs> <laughs> they have a suitcase drum. Uh, not going to be on this episode, unfortunately. But it's uh, it's awesome. She she she, she she plays a mean kick drum. Um, Musical goals as a band. What's now? You just you know you got into town not too long ago, so obviously just playing gigs. But is there anything on your radar that you're like, I'd love to play that gig, or I'd love to do this festival, or play with that musician? Any gig. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Was, um, yeah, I think we just like to play as much as we can mm. for the, the biggest crowds we can. I don't, you know, um, I. He's a simple man. <laughs> we are I, all new here and not showing up expecting. To right, right. Have the same things that we had in the town that we grew up in and built, you know. Yeah. So. If you're in a band or you're a musician and you like what you hear when they are upstairs performing in front of the guitar wall, please, please send them a message or me in the comments. 
say, you know, with, with some way to get a hold of you so that they can start doing gigs with you. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, favorite show memory as a band? Probably in Alaska. <laughs> I had Sarah EP release for me. I think that was... That was pretty cool. I was in Those pain that day, so... You're always in pain. I know. <laughs> The no, no, but I don't know. I like but the beard is amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, I grew it myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> mine's second hand. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's that's awesome. The best is when when they don't when they don't get it. <laughs> that's the best when they don't get it. And you're just waiting. <laughs> Anyway, you were saying. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, probably chicken stock. That was really fun. You know? Chicken stock. Okay, I, uh, you've piqued my interest. Do you want it? Okay. It's amazing. Chicken stock is a music festival in Alaska, I and uh, it's of course in Alaska. <laughs> it's way it's up in a town, town called, called Chicken, chicken. <laughs> which is really. I'm sorry. I, wait, I, back up. There's a town called Chicken. It's the, very small. It's very small, and, and I don't want to insult so anybody in Chicken, but. From what I could All tell, it was two RV parks in the middle of nowhere. That in a gas and station. And some old like dredging equipment. Wow. And a bar. And a, um, yeah, of course there's. A bar. And it is hours from anything. It's probably closer to Canada than uh, any big city in Alaska. Yeah. Um, but they, and yet they, they have a music festival. They have a music festival, and do. we went to play two summers ago. Um, and had no idea what to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, and our EP wasn't out yet. It was but supposed to be, but it was supposed to be, but it got delayed. Uh, but it yeah. was, uh, it was awesome. It's, uh, it's probably uh, like three thousand people there. Yeah, and it, one stage. It's really? only, so yes. it's only one it was stage. Massive. So we, and it's amazing. Here we are, this band without any record or anything mm -hmm. like that, and uh, we're on the one stage at a decent slot. I think it was like eight o'clock at we night. We played right after a couple of the headliners, and yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, Wait, after the headliners? Mm -hmm. But the music goes till. Two, two in the morning. Oh, yeah. so that yeah, was yeah, yeah, when yeah. the most people okay. were down there. Because usually headliner means last. Well, everyone's kind of so. down there anyway. But you can hear the music all over the yeah. campgrounds and everywhere. And but that's that's amazing. Three thousand. I can't even fathom that many people. Why? Well, I, I wouldn't say three thousand. They said they, they sold three thousand of the tickets, and there was yeah. probably I don't know fifteen hundred people out there between all the motorhomes and lawn chairs. Probably Still the biggest show we've played. Yeah, yeah. but everybody was paying attention as opposed to some other festivals where you play where there's multiple stages going and you're competing for an audience when there's right. a much bigger band right. than you playing on the next <laughs> stage over. It's really nice. And I might add, this festival paid. All X. So um, very well, I mean. Yeah. So wow. it was. Uh, I gotta go to Alaska. They were really great to musicians. It was a really cool community. I plan on coming probably. back to see them. At yeah. Some point. Um, so that was definitely a favorite show, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Beat that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you said you you said yours already. Yeah, that, that's what that was mine. Yeah. Right, right, right. Oh, they both were just. Was that yours too? Because you said the EP release originally. Yeah, our EP release was great. We rented an old train depot in our hometown. Ooh. And we had a couple hundred people show up to that, too, which is crazy for an EP release. And people we didn't know. People that we right? had no like, idea who they were, yeah. and it was great. We had one of our local bars there that sold all the booze, and it was fantastic. Yeah, we had a really good turnout and sold a lot of merch. Nice. Um, touching real quick on your everybody was paying attention comment. You, I don't know if you've run into this yet, but don't be surprised if you're playing. There's a lot of people... But a lot of them are also gaming. Oh, yeah. Because that's a thing here where... Or eating or doing yeah, something. Yeah. You know, people will totally just not even look up the whole gig and then the, you'll be done. They'll be like, hey, that was really good, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Appreciate the guy it. You thought the back of your head was appreciated. <laughs> so. Or the guy that's dancing will come up to you afterwards and be like, you guys are right. That's happened to me a right. few times. No, nah, we're okay. And then he's just getting down every song. Right. <laughs> From favorite show memory to favorite venue. Obviously, you haven't had a lot of venues in Vegas to play yet, so just your favorite venue. Was it Chicken Stock, or was it uh, that bar at the EP release, or is there another one? Just a venue that you know takes good care of you. All right. I think there's a bar in Seward called the Yukon. Oh, God, I love that place. <laughs> yes. Um, Seward, Alaska. It's a... Uh, which is always a, a great time, and they have an apartment for the bands that come and stay because it's just like a four hour drive. And Giant bouncer okay. named Kronk who wears kilts. Kronk is awesome. Hi, and Kronk. The, the, the stage wow. is tiny, and we put Carly on the floor, oh, yeah. and the, the drummer is in this like cubby hole. <laughs> it's like four by four. How great. Yeah. It, um, it's amazing. It's, 
Yeah, it's amazing and very Alaskan. And there's a little like. bar uh, apartment attached to it that they let the band stay in. You can right. do whatever you want, and it's right. you just walk. When you take a stage break, you just walk <laughs> next door and go sit on the couch for a few minutes. And go that to sounds a lot like um, if you if you go to uh, Laughlin, where they have you know, a bunch of casinos in a row, and you play down there, a um, place called Losers Lounge, mm -hmm. one of the casinos, there's like airstreams that you they get you give the bands to stay in. Oh, nice. That's yeah, awesome. which yeah, I thought was really cool, but I don't know, the apartment sounds kind of nice, too. <laughs> um, so <laughs> built in, like, 1942, I'm sure. <laughs> From uh, favorite venue, any dream shows you want to play? That pie in the sky, like, oh, I'd love to do this, you know, like Glastonbury or, or, you know, one of those, or, or whatever. Mm. I think, go ahead. Well, if, if well, my answer is so different for the band I'm in, or like overall. <laughs> well, in, in my like dreams. for me, and this is a very, you know, like it's a very selfish dream. I would love to play Eric Clapton's Crossroads, but that's because it's a guitar fest and it's all yeah. guitar stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that that'd be Molly if he can ever do that. Obviously. Yeah. Now, am, am I correct that he does? He can't play anymore, right? Because I have just... no idea. I mean. Because like, I thought I remember hearing that he, he couldn't play anymore. Yeah, that's right. And then I thought I saw a video of him playing, and it looked like recent. The internet's a very weird place. It is. Full of <laughs> true sand lies. You just put Eric Clapton's face on some dude <laughs> playing the really fake, easily. The deep yeah. fake nowadays. Ooh. Can't believe anything. But uh, anybody else? Dream show? Just, I want to play for a lot of people oh. when, and when they're paying attention. That's I want to get paid a lot to stay home. <laughs> Money would be great. Like, I well, like that. But... Mine's too many things. My dream yeah, show. Yeah. One or the other, right? I'd love to do anything where I get to hang out with the Foo Fighters. Oh, yeah. That'd be really fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't even care if we get to play. Just just really just to get to hang out and actually talk to them. And, and, and uh, oh, welcome back, dog. Dog's <laughs> back, everybody. Yes. Uh, so, do we have a next show lined up? Uh, as of right now, we do not. We are currently recording a couple tracks, and right on. Um, we'll probably be looking to book shortly and, and actively trying to get on that yeah. internet. Yeah, we've had some things <coughs> pop up recently, but we're working on right recording on. and putting out some new stuff. When you're happy with them, I'd love to review. Sure, yeah, absolutely. You know, separate video and help uh, grow the awareness a little bit, but also, you know, basically get. Any re any anybody's opinion on it is always yeah you know, mm -hmm. nice. no we'd love that as well you can read nice. you can review our current EP too oh yes yes sorry yeah, you did say we EP have another one we got yeah but we're gonna Ruby. um send me oh, those no. files and I'll be happy to yeah yeah you didn't bring one did you did you bring a merch I might have one in I my forgot phone. all the merch if you have one yeah. cool anyway. yay so <laughs> I'll be sure if if we do have one I'll be sure to put a picture of it and if not then I'll be sure to put a picture of it. <laughs> so, somewhere online. You got it online somewhere? Yeah, it's yeah. on all the Spotify, wherever people YouTube, listen to music, Napster, all those places. Yeah, cool. Uh, Links to all their stuff will be down in the doobly doo. Uh, let's talk gear. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now you don't have a drummer, per se, like a, a drummer, drummer. So they're not the gear whore. So it's probably him, guy yeah. who just came from Guitar Center for this <laughs> interview. Uh, so we'll go you first. Um, what are you rocking currently? So my main rig is I got two guitars. I got my my main guitar, my baby is my '98 Gibson SG. Mm -hmm. That one, that guitar has a whole story with it. Um, Tell us. So I moved back into my childhood home when I was uh, like just like between freshman and sophomore year, um, and at that point I had an Epiphone SG. I just I wanted the Gibson SG. Thing. Sure. So. But so when my neighbor came down, who hadn't seen us in years, uh, he's like, oh, you play guitar now. And he saw what guitar was playing. He's like, I want you to come down to my house. I want to show you something. And I went down to his house and he pulls out the brown brown case and lifts it up. And I didn't, I've never seen a Gibson case at that point before. Right. And so he opens it up and it's got this beautiful pink blanket over it. <laughs> Satin. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like this, this, this super pretty. And then he pulls back the curtain and it's a 98 SG standard. Yep. Um, What's the paint job on that? It's a cherry, the Heritage cherry. Yeah. Were you playing that at Park Bay Eight? Uh, no, I've been rocking my second guitar, which is my ESC thirty five, and that's kind of what I'm doing with the heavy hearts right now, just because we're doing a three piece thing in the semi hollow. Right, really right, right, right. Vintage kind of tone too. Yeah, and that's good that you actually recognize that you need a different sound for 
a three piece as opposed to yeah. the, when there's another guitar. He involved. was playing my Explorer life for a while. <laughs> yeah, before I got the ESC 35, which the ESC 35 kind of had a cool story too. That one, uh, I was teaching in a, in a new shop in Alaska, wood and wire, and uh, one of like basically a mentor, uh, I guess for the the previous the guy who had another store there a couple of years before. Mm -hmm. um, he had a ESC 35 that he bought. wasn't really his thing, so he put it on the wall on consignment, and it sat there for six months staring me in the face. <laughs> and so finally, I worked out a deal with him, and then did, but that's the guitar I got. It just some guitars are kind of meant to be, and those yep. are the two that kind of fell into my lap. I've had that happen where you open the case, like, what is that? Mm -hmm. You know, it just speaks to you. So. Yeah. Um, what are you rocking currently? I play a 2018 Alpine White. Gibson Hummingbird Limited. Golly, that's a lot of words. Yeah, no, that was like my dream vanity guitar. Um, I learned on a knockoff Hummingbird. That's a, that way I should tell yeah. And uh, so, and then my wife gifted it to me. So wow, yeah. thank you, Ivan. I'm going to skip the obvious joke. It's it's been done from this point. <laughs> <today>. Yeah. <laughs> Does she does she come to gigs? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, often. Yeah. She's one of yeah, she's she gets down. Yeah. She gets down. We, we appreciate her very much. Right on. Um what are you rocking in I didn't ask what you're rocking in terms of amp. Um my main amp so for a little while I was using an orange dual terror. Mm -hmm. That's the amp I just came from Guitar Center from trading in. Um so that one's no longer on the ring. Right. But, and what uh, did you trade that in for, Mr. Lead Guitar Player? Uh, a bass for a bass. for tracking. I just needed something. Yes. Uh, Who, who's gonna play the bass? Me, probably. <laughs> really, any between, of us? Like, could, it's like, all, between all three of us. Okay, it's yeah. probably yeah. We've all discussed that's it. That's how we should do like, it. Well, one, we can one, just do it. One for the right. Yeah. Well, when they perform, they don't have a bass player. That's song. why I'm, I'm making a deal of it. But <laughs> we'll, um, we'll each pick a song and we can do it. Yeah. yeah. Noise. But uh, see, this is how negotiations are made. <laughs> um, <laughs> get about it no, yeah, that's good. On my my second album, my. My current bass player played the, the drum set on my album, and I played all, I played all the instruments, <laughs> except that. Whatever works. Right? In the, but my main amp, like my, my baby, is my Rockover Mach 3. It's a 50-watt amp, and it has a 25-watt uh, mode, so it just the head and room on it kind of compresses, and it's just got super vintage really right. cool tone. Um, but tonight I'll be using a Marshall Origin. It's my uh, friend's, just because it's a smaller. Rig. So you're, you're going to do electric tonight? Yep. Cool. I like a little electric. It's just when you see the room, room six, you will realize why there's no drum kit. There's yeah, no, yeah. no half stack. That's <laughs> that's the reason I brought the Marshall Origin because it just it's a little combo amp and it's cool it's, it's gonna work really you well. You can stand on it. I, I don't it. know if, 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 if you will appreciate that. <laughs> All right, no, it's um, fine. People so don't mind. Before we get to you, um, what are you rocking for pedals? I'm very very basic when it comes to like. Same. I'm a very simple player. I like, like I use my guitar mm -hmm. into my wireless just because I like moving around a lot. Right, uh, which goes in my board. So I have a slash wah, which has a different casing on it. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, slash is not yeah, yeah, like yeah, the yeah, artist. Okay. Sorry, um, sorry. I was like, what's a slash wah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, just it's a wah pedal. Uh, but I took my old casing. It was like a limited edition Sunburst chassis, and I put the guts in there. So, so I have a slash wah, and then that goes into my the, the most important pedal anyone can ever have on their board, a tuner pedal. <gasps> yes. Slash standby. Slash standby. Slash bypass, yes. Although I do have a tuning fork, just in case. Hey, it, yeah. Uh, we it have it has been, there are times. Those are much easier. I don't, well, I, they weren't a thing at the time, <laughs> you know? It's no one ever heard of them, but so, uh, yeah. but uh, there's been times where even on the electric, I had to pull out the tuning fork yeah. because of the power strip, you know, that powered Everything went out, or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, but so you got um, the tuner pedal, you got your slash wah. Yep. And then uh, <laughs> it goes. Uh, I have a uh, what is it? A, it's a Dunlop Supapus. It's a delay pedal, mm -hmm. and it's I can't do. It's an analog delay. I can't do delay pedals that I can't do a tap tempo on. So it's got the tap tempo feature. Oh, it does. Yeah, because nice. I can't. I don't like sitting there bending down. I, it's just not immersive in the show. I right. feel like it might distract, be distracting. So I like being able to just tap to the tempo real quick, mm -hmm. and then call it good. Um, and then I have a boost line driver that goes at the end of the chain that because right. I don't like using my volume knob 
in like a big stage scenario. I just don't feel like it cuts through enough, so I actually have a, a, a volume boost, and it's a clean boost. You have just... a metal zone on there, too, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. jeez. Yep. I had a metal zone. <laughs> yep. Isn't the metal zone the kind that the second you put your foot near it, it's... <laughs> yeah, 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 Mids yeah. all the way down, Jeez. bass and treble crank. <laughs> so, no, I don't have enough metal zone, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I, I did, and I, <laughs> I got rid of it, because I it was literally... the, the I, It was either totally off, or it's one of those ones that the second you, like... Bump the knob at all. It's, yeah, it's I like it's either on or off. Just, it's, they gotta be worth some money Sunday with the memes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Keep it on to mine. But, uh, and then, uh, yeah, from the boost pedal, that's it. Like, it's very right. small, very... Not even the, uh, the Orange Boss distortion? Uh, no, no, I don't have any drive pedals. I just use the amps. Right. Well, honestly, the, the music you're doing, it, it wouldn't really fit. Mm -hmm. I think what you are what you have, it, it all, like you said, is very cohesive and it blends lovely. Well, and when you can use the crunch on your amp that has so much character to it. Honestly, yeah. a good A-B switch, to me, is so nice. Yeah, like, I, like game pedals and stuff are, are cool, and, like, for... Every, it, obviously, everyone has their own tone, and how they get that tone is, you know, how the, right. that's their way. For me, it's like, my amp sounds good to me. Yeah. Until I was the guitar, like, in a three-piece band, until I was the guitar and the singer, mm -hmm. I didn't really care about tone. I didn't get it. Yeah. I didn't understand how they could sit there and spend all the money and really worry about it. And then I was like, wait a minute. I like this tone. This is the tone for the band. Well, and a lot of those yeah. people that are spending the money on it aren't dialing in the tone on their amps and don't know what their amps can do and their instruments and how to push the gain and the master. True that, yeah. All those good things to make your yeah. amps sound great. Yeah. Like, there's also, like, like I said, like it's all a puzzle piece. Like There's no... Okay, I shouldn't say there's no wrong tone, but there's no <laughs> wrong way to get your tone. Like If, 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 that's, if you use... You know, a tube screamer in front, that's what you use, and like, that's it's a classic, and there's nothing wrong with that for me. It's just like, I am moving around so much on stage, the more buttons I have to press, the the, the more complicated things get. The toe know? tapping can be annoying when you're, especially yeah. if you're in the middle of a solo, and you're like, I gotta go back. I know, so like, I already have to press my boost button, and sometimes a wah. Right. And, and sometimes I have to add the delay, so. And all that too, I'm, always, rooms and yeah, yeah. I'm always jealous of the when they've got like you can tell they've got the expensive guitar because they hit that little switch on the guitar and suddenly their tone completely changes oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's all they got to do. Or yep. they got the expensive pickups at least. Right? Yeah. Uh, before we get to you, yeah, pedals. I go di. I don't use pedals. I play acoustic guitar because I don't care about tone at we all. Sneak, <laughs> we, sneak some, we sneak a little bit of reverb on there. Um, sometimes the that's the PA. Yeah. So yeah. di. And keep for those of you that don't know, I don't know why you wouldn't, but. DI basically he's he's playing right through the PA, um, which is the way acoustic guitar panel should be in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. you don't go through a tuner pedal. No, I, I use a snark or, or I use one of these. That's true. You, you, I remember you had a snark on. Oh, yeah. that was a, another reason I went to guitar center today, wasn't it? Well, but, you were there and I asked you. Yeah. Yes, okay. okay. Uh, you didn't get one though. See, I did. Oh, see, I got snark. Yes. I always feel dumb if I bring my if I have my acoustic and I bring the whole pedal board out just right. for the tuner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. That's where my my tuner pedal is. So eh. it just makes it look like you're doing all kinds of fancy stuff when you're. Yeah, um, makes me look like I'm one of those guys with the looping station and the you know the all that. But all uh, kinds of preamp pedals. Down so there. what are you rocking besides the suitcase drum? Yeah, that's a 1978 Samsonite. Wow! <laughs> and the drum? I, I, well, it's just a random head. We bought a Tom off Craigslist and sawed it apart, and I'm still using the head that came with the Tom off Craigslist. Yes. Don't fix it if it ain't snapped yep. yet. You but, just, all you gotta do is stencil the band the logo name yeah, thing. I'm just gonna write it with Sharpie. <laughs> Which honestly would take be really on. cool. Just I take the might. name. Yeah, yeah, duct tape. Right. Um, Make the S's like the old stussy S's. <laughs> yeah. That we all do. With the dollar sign <laughs> thing. The thing. So uh, what are you rocking though right now? Um, I play a Fender mandolin, the Flogging Molly Signature Edition, because I like the way it looks and it plays nicely. Before uh, that, I had a hundred dollar <laughs> mandolin that looked like a Telecaster. That was like twenty pounds. And it weighed pounds. like twenty pounds, and it's about this big. Hundred bucks, and I was like, "Well, why the hell not?" I mean, you know, I don't know if I'm going to join this band yet. So uh, I feel like I should teach myself mandolin real quick. But she, I, I asked her to join the band initially, and she said no. Um, <laughs> I was in like three other bands at the so, time. I couldn't. I couldn't details, it. details. So she wasn't in the band when we went to record the EP. But I asked her if she would sing backup because she had like sang it up in mics and stuff, and I knew our voices blended well, and I liked the way it sounded. Um, so the from then, I was able to her. convince her to join the band. But she was like, "Well, I need to play an instrument because I'm not going to be your tambourine girl." 
Um, Even like, though I am the tambourine girl. So I was like, uh, mandolin? Full circle. And so she then learned how to play mandolin. I had too much that? time to play an instrument to stand there. Well, what's funny is, the night I met them, I was approached by somebody whose name is Amanda Lynn. Oh, oh yeah, we know her. She's from great. Coconut and the Clue. Yeah. She's great. Look, we're uh, working on schedules to get them on this show. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was funny that you said that. I was like, Amanda Lynn. Um, and... She actually did, I, first time it ever happened to me, walked up and said, you're the room six guy, right? And I was like, it happened! <laughs> anyway. That's great. I'm, I, have, I, have, I have small little goals. She's one of the first people I met when we got here. Yeah, she, okay. Yes, she's awesome. awesome. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is, we knew each other years ago. Like, you know, going to the open mic stuff. Mm-hmm. Coconut and the Clue always hosts an open mic. And uh, so it was, I was like, I know you, but you don't know me. You don't remember me. Because mm-hmm. I was just one of the open mic people. As you do, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, there you go. Aside from the mandolin mm-hmm. and the kick drum mm-hmm. and the tambourine, what else do you, do you play anything else in the band? Um, no, but on our recordings, I'm running some pedals on the mandolin because I like to play guitar solos with a mandolin <laughs> and use distortion. Which is a whole other thing. Um, but, you um, talking about that, um, that other one you had, the $100 one that it looked like, what was it? Um, it looked like a Telecaster. It was a telecaster. It, no, I just it, use distortion pedals and I use reverb and delay when we play live. It, it reminded me of this band I saw um, at. Uh, um, I went and reviewed a band called Tyrants by Night, mm-hmm. metal band, and there was another band where the singer was, or the, the lead guitarist, one of their three guitar players, was playing a white flying V guitar, mm-hmm. and he had strapped on his back a white flying V violin that he went. <laughs> Damn! And I was just like, what am I seeing right now? This is amazing! <laughs> yeah, they were also like, cool. Unfortunately, I, you'll have to watch the video link here. I don't remember the name of that band, and I'm sorry. I'm gonna watch this video so I can find that link. Right? Um, from current gear, any dream gear you're lusting after? I know you got your dream acoustic. Thanks, dude. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you. And you got your dream bass! Why do you gotta ask me? This is gonna be a long interview. <laughs> okay, you just ask him that question. <laughs> <laughs> you have any dream gear you want? Oh, maybe yeah. a nicer head for your kick, your your suitcase drum. <laughs> no, I, I want a nice eight string guitar. I, I want a key. Yeah, I'm sorry, eight string, eight string or a nine string even. My roommate has an eight string, and I like playing seven strings. But I want one. I mean, I've I I've, want one. I've seen them on the on the interwebs, <laughs> but I've never actually seen one oh, in person or heard one. Like there's one at my place. But right on. They're they're delightful. But nice. yeah, I want one. I want to spend a lot of money yeah. on it. Um, Pariah was one. I actually had a, a, a Nora, their, one of their guitars. Mm-hmm. He had an acoustic, and then where the F hole was, there were like, it, it had this cool little extra bit of the neck. Mm-hmm. So he had like three strings that had a couple extra frets. So I'm like, that's one of those things you're, you're listening to play. Like, what is that note? <laughs> yeah, they had some really nice guitars too when I watched them play. I, was, I don't remember what they were, but I remember being very impressed. They might have been Aristides too, but I don't want to. Okay, so that's your dream gear. Pink. So, like, my next guitar is going to be a Les Paul because I need to, to complete like the Gibson trifecta, and I feel like a Les Paul would still fit. We've been talking music. about that since we met. Too. I know, and I, I was going to get a Les Paul, but then the ESD thirty five kind of fell in my lap. And that, but my dream Les Paul, and I've never found one. Um, it's a like it's a Les Paul custom gold top, mm-hmm. but. With the dark, not, not the sunburst. Not the sunburst. Everyone's got a sunburst. I, I I understand. So I want a gold top dark back. So it's because usually the gold tops they got like the natural color. Right. right. So a dark back is kind of like a it's like a walnut. Like a, but it's a it's not as I don't know. It's like kind of milky in a way. It's really cool. It sounds nice. And so I'd have that. I got small hands, so the ES two thirty five and SG work really well for me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. For for wait, guitar. Check this out. She's got man hands, baby. There's long skinny ones. But, those, uh, are pe- those are penis hands right there. That's true. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> so basically, if I could have one made, or if I can find something similar, mm-hmm. basically, like, the the neck joint would have an access heel joint so I can play the higher frets. Nice. Um, But it'd have, like, the dark plastic instead of the white plastic, and it'd have, like, the ebony fretboard with the block and lace. Like, it's a Les Paul Custom. So you haven't really thought about this much at all, have no. you? <laughs> I told you. Jeez. He's got it I, no, out. seriously, that's impressive. And I hope you get all those things knocked out. One day. What color are the pots? Well, I mean, I don't know. Oh, actually, I'd probably put, put mustard caps in there. Ooh. Like, I have I have the same 
So all of my ones? all of my gear has the same. My SG and my ES235 now have the same exact pickups. Okay. Um, they're Allen Echo Four, so they're basically let's the guitar's natural. It's almost a flat EQ, so it's like you hear the actual say, yeah. gu- guitar tone between the two instruments plugged in. Um, non wax potted. They're Mojo Tone um, Fifty Nine. Low wines. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> you have lost me, but I'm enjoying it. Go on. Um, for for the nerds out there, go for it. <laughs> uh, it has um, both guitars have a bone nut, um, which thank you, Todd from Wooden Wire, for showing me how to make them. I made them myself. Bone nut. <laughs> uh, graphite. We're Ten years old. <laughs> they have uh, graphite saddles because uh, I was breaking strings. Uh, I, I switched. Right. I switched picks. I used to use the Tortex point eighty eight. Now I use. Gravity picks uh, three mils, so they're really thick. And when I switched, I started breaking strings all the time, so I switched to uh, the graphite saddles. And in between the bone nut and the graphite saddles, it's just really cool, like overtone on both instruments. Right. It just it sounded buttery smooth. If I, if I, yeah. If I narrow it down to the in, definition. Yeah. And then both have the same exact electronics by Dark Moon pickups in New York, right um, the same CTS pots with the mustard caps and all that jazz, but yeah, I'm probably talking too much by now. Mm. I can go on. It's no, all right. Not at all. You, you want a cigarette? You need a cold shower? Do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no other dream gear for you? You got your guitar? Are you happy? Or is there a, like an amp or something you want? Or I, I mean, I... I have other acoustics, that, but I'm pretty happy with what I have. Well, I know there's like $5,000 acoustics out there. Yeah, so. sure. I mean... I would never turn one away, hint, right, hint. Right. but um, all right. So from the highs of dream gear to the lows of losing gear, anybody ever lose any gear, forget something at a gig, or, or yeah, almost? when we played at Rebar a couple of weeks ago, I didn't can't find my tuner pedal anymore. Wow, so that was cool. that was recent. Yeah, I gotta go down there. Well, I thought it was around the house, but it, it ain't. <sighs> Pedals are easy to lose, especially but, when it's one like that that everybody has. Yeah, it's one of the white TC. Boss. No, it's a white. The oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, if you were at Rebar when they played and you happen to have her pedal, give it back. <laughs> it might just be at Rebar, to be honest. It's I just should probably. Yeah, you should, yeah, <laughs> it might be sitting on the No stage. one's touching it. Like, what is that? But thing? I just figured this out a couple days ago. So. Oh, geez. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll I, see what happens. I lost a guitar. Oh, wow. Oh, I left it in the parking lot next to where the van was and I got home and I was like, I really just did that, didn't I? Oh, no. Yeah. I. Faithful viewers, I will not bore you by telling you that story again, but suffice to say, I missed that what was it? 65 Tysco Del Rey. Ah, oh, Tysco. Green, which is the rare color. Mm-hmm. Mirror pickguard, where they, it was striped with like fin, uh, mm-hmm. like smooth, knurled, smooth. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And the winning bar started this thin and ended that thick. Yep. And there was like this big gear, like spring. It was just ridiculous. Just spring. Like, it was a good. zero nut. And see, see, I'm going, yeah. And, and I, it was heavy. For the size, mm-hmm. but it was the sound of my indie rock band, The Suspense. Part is, it, was, it wasn't even a paying gig, it was a battle of the bands, Hooters Casino. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, of course, I'll be lost. Take it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you even bother going back? Uh, I did, and of course, it was gone, yeah. and I called. No luck. I didn't bother. I, I, I got it from a pawn shop. I didn't bother calling the pawn shops, because if, if I found that thing, I wouldn't have. Found it, but mm-hmm. I miss it. I, I got a replacement Tysco. I didn't look at the specs, and you know it's a Fender Stratocat, uh, Strat Squire Bullet. Mm-hmm. So bing, bing, bing. Yep. it's basically that long. <laughs> and so when I got it, I was like, "Oh, cool! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot." <laughs> so it's it's fine, but it wasn't the same. Uh, the thing about Tyscos are every single one is set up different. Some of them have different switch. Some of them have switches. Some of them have knobs. This one had both. There's no two that are exactly the like. And that's what made it so cool. Yeah. And yet, and yet, buy one eBay for like 165 bucks. Yep. In fact, none of the guitars you're going to see up in room six are more than $199.99. Wow. Guitar Center special. Heck yeah. Actually, Sam, back. Sam Ash for one of them. Um, so, you haven't lost any gear? You've been pretty good about that? Yeah. Um, I have like a guitar that I lost idea. for like 20 years or something. But wow. I found it. But I left it at his ex girlfriend's oh, house. Oh, so that's not we knew each other. okay. No, no, that's that's not like a I, I you know 
Well, I left it and had a, like a falling out with the person I was hanging out with and didn't want to go back over right. there. And then years went by and I was like, it was a little lilac Dan Electro crazy little guitar. And Dan Electro. I loved it. I still, I still have some Dan Electro pedals. I still love it. Like yeah. it's, it's terrible guitar, but I love it. And, <laughs> but I had it when I was 16 and I left it over there when I was, I think, 19. But you got it back. And then, like, three years ago, my brother found it in a thrift store with my Deftones stickers on it and my acid oh, bath stickers. Oh, wow. And the same high E broken, all dusty. Like, it had just been sitting over there the entire time, so I have it back. Nice. 50 bucks. How much did you pay for it originally? 100 bucks. So, it's a $150 guitar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, they don't sell it for more than 200 with, its, with the story. It appreciated with depreciation. <laughs> yeah, that's, it right. bothered me the whole, the whole time, though. I'm glad I got um, that. Good. We're on the last question. You made it. Oh, thank God. I know. The scotch is, <laughs> the scotch is run out. I um, Let's pretend we're talking to new musicians. Say someone who just arrived into town, maybe. Um, Welcome. Any, each of, if you can each come up with like one maintenance tip for that new musician, and no, don't say change your strings or... Oh, I, 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 I was teaching in a, in a shop. I, I can tell... I can... Do tell. Okay. So that's your camera. The number <laughs> number one thing to do is humidify your guitar, mm -hmm. especially here. Especially anywhere that's super dry, like Alaska was pretty dry, right. but here's like even more dry. Like get a, if you are putting your guitar on a stand, make sure you have a room humidifier when you put it in its case. Make sure it has a case humidifier. Um, make sure that you take it in every once in a while the guitar to have it a setup done, have the frets cleaned, and if no one's told you this yet, Doctor Bob. I've routinely asked someone, mm -hmm. I've asked this question every single interview, and 80% at least have immediately looked at the camera and said, go to Dr. Bob, have him set you up, have him do repairs, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, maybe even build you the custom less Paul you want. But Dr. Bob, um, I don't know his, co his contact information, but you just Google Dr. Bob Vegas and huh. guitar. I've whatever. heard a lot of good things about him in the local musician groups too. Yeah, okay. but he... he uh, I don't know his official name, his real name, but he's been doing it a long time. And a lot of people like guys with guitars more expensive than my my car. Well, maybe not that. Maybe I'm I'm okay, but more expensive than my dog. But yeah, you know, but uh, they, are, they they trust him with his with all their stuff. Um, and, and so, but that's actually really good about the humidifying yep. in and out of the case. Yep, because a lot of people, myself included, might. Just hang on a wall or whatever. Mm -hmm. My guitars don't see the light of day anymore. They just hang in that room, so I don't even humidify them because they're just air conditioned, you know, yeah. pretty much. Um, and I, I'm bad. I admit it. Um, no one's judging. They're judging. It's the they're judging. Yeah, the internet's definitely judging. Yeah, always yeah. judging. Anyway, next maintenance tip. I'm the maintenance guy. I'm girl. really bad about it. I yeah. never change my strings. I never clean anything. The one good thing is, if, if that I would say to do is, if you're really sweaty like I am, <laughs> don't <laughs> drip all over your pickups and your frets and all these things without giving it thing a good a, electricity a wipe and down. salt water. Don't mix. Actually, they mix really well. Well, <laughs> you'll get some rusty pickups. A little bit. Yeah, and it's from your body, and that's gross. So. <laughs> That's clean those things up when you're. That's a new one on me. That's a first. Good job. <laughs> and avoid dripping on your guitar pedals too. Yeah. Um, well said, Carl. For you, it's just marry someone who will buy you your dream guitar. That <laughs> definitely that, and uh, take it out of your car every once in a while. Don't don't just you know. Yeah, you live in especially your car. acoustics. Just take them in. It's a Vegas. Just take them in there. If you're right. cold, they're cold. <laughs> if you're hot, if, if you're yeah. hot, they're hot. Yeah. yeah. Um, my little thing to add on to that is, um, if you're doing a gig, even an open mic, take it in, take it out, and let it acclimate to whatever yes. that environment is, whether it's outside or inside, because you know it doesn't wood and stuff. They don't like just going right from their nice safe case right into some hot stage light thing, uh, especially if it's your gig, you know, if you have the opportunity to set everything up on stage ahead of time, get it out and get it on there. Um, cool. Thank you very much for coming by, guys. Thank That's you very right. much for watching and hang out because we're going to see them in front of the guitar wall in just a minute. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.
bottle of mud. Put the truth away, saying that we drink too much. I can't say I'm cured, but on the Lord's return, we'll be throwing bottles in the fire.
to love you anymore. Don't you? <laughs>
bummer. I just <laughs> Nice. One, two, three, four, one, two. Take off the mask you wear. Hope it's not what's still here. Though those things are diminishing with time. A desire for something more. Fatigued and saddle sore. There's yet to be a judgment you can't find. Adam Patterson and the Heavy Hearts for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. Make sure you check out their EP. Link will be down below. It's self-titled and it's awesome. In the meantime, if you'd like to support content that you love, please consider clicking the Patreon link down in the description or maybe buy one of my CDs. Feel free to also check out their stuff. And if you want to see more videos like this from them, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for coming by. Remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say bye, guys. Bye. bye. Noodle. I turned on the volume. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can cut before the noodle. That is